This is the fun part of our job. No desk mask for you? You're so used to it? You know, I probably should wear one, but in all honesty, you can't, it makes it worse to breathe almost. Yeah. Plus, your lungs are probably already half drywall anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, 30 years of doing 30 this. 30 years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 30 years later, I don't think it's too late now, I think. Yeah. So what's the uh, process today? So you sand this all flat. You brush it down and basically finish coat. Okay. Um, that's it. The only thing that's left after that is to sand it, touch it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this will all be done today. All the drywall will be done. Other than sand it here. Oh, okay. I see. So you sand it once, clear coat, and then you have to, or finish coat, then you have to sand it again? Yeah. Okay. Final so, sand up. Got it. Cool. Right on. All right. I'll let you get back to work. Moving we'll right along. Yes, you guys are. What are you thinking, buddy? Huh? How you doing? You're just filthy messy. Look at you. You're a filthy mess. You don't like the rain, do you? You don't like it when it rains. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Poor thing. It's time to move the Murray McMurray red broilers out to pasture. Moved the uh, Kramer meat mobile into this pen. Katie and I created a pen with two 160 foot uh, Premier One uh, chicken netting. I still have to go get the uh, electrifier and, or the charger, whatever you call it, defense charger, and get that set up. But we wanted to possibly set up this um, net that we got. It's a 50 by 50 net that we wanted to see if we can maybe put on some T-posts and give them some uh, aerial protection in the entire run. So we're gonna just see how big this thing is and then maybe get some T-posts. It's gonna be, uh, anyway, we're gonna try to get this thing set up and- uh, What could go wrong? Yeah. Hopefully we don't need this thing out here all the time. Maybe just until they get big enough to where aerial predators won't come and get them. But anyway, we're gonna kind of play with it, see how it works. So we'll be back when we get it all set up. <laughs> Trying to put up that uh, netting was a complete failure. It turned out it was probably 100 feet by 50 feet. Had four uh, pull strings on each corner, but it didn't really make a corner when you pulled it. We tied it to the trees and tried to get it over the netting here and it just, it wasn't gonna work. It was just gonna droop down too low. The sides where there wasn't any uh, pull force on it just were gonna fall on the ground. It was getting caught in sticks and it just wasn't working very well. So we decided to nix that idea after trying for like an hour and a half, two hours. Just didn't go well. So what we're gonna do now is just get the chickens out because they need to get outdoors. So. Uh, we don't have anything to carry them in, so Katie and I are gonna go each grab two at a time, bring them out here, electrify the fence, get the water and their uh, feed set up, and kind of take it from there. So, all right, here we are. These are uh, number two and three, or yeah, two and three, number one's already in there. Wish us luck, wish them luck. So we just moved 19 outdoors. They're all underneath the Kramer remote, the Kramer meat mobile. <laughs> um, five of them are staying inside because they got picked on and they have um, wound or they have flesh damage. It's wound. Um, so anyway, sprayed them with the red coat and then also the blue coat again. So I got myself again. So now what we're gonna do is uh, go build one of the cattle panel chicken runs. Yep. What is it called? A cattle yeah. chicken coop. A cattle panel chicken coop. Hey, look, who, look who's over here. Uh, we're gonna build one of the cattle panel chicken coops and then we're gonna move the red, boy, the red rangers out there. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And then we're going to move the larger AV2N 
coop closer to the house and we're gonna move out some of the boys that are fully feathered, some of our breeding stock. Hmm. We're gonna right. move right. them out as well. So as many as we can get outside today, that's our plan. Yeah. Okay, oh, we should, we should get their water and their, and yeah. their feed first. Let's yep. do that really quick. Okay, all right, so quick update here. Um, <laughs> man, uh, this homesteading stuff, it ain't easy. So here's where we're at with things uh, besides really bad shadows. Maybe if I go this way, maybe it just doesn't matter for you guys. Um, we're already seeing aerial predators circle around. We see their shadows going around. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chicken netting and wrap it around the meat mobile so they have to stay underneath the meat mobile. And uh, Katie is getting their food and their water. So we're going to try to keep them underneath that shelter for now until we come up with a better plan of keeping them safe from aerial predators. So that's what I'm gonna do. You gotta adapt. You have to adapt. Okay, so they're all wrapped up. We just talked about maybe moving them into one of the uh, cattle panel chicken coops after we're done with those. We'll see. Or- Modifying this. Modifying the, uh, the meat mobile to have walls underneath the uh, red roof and then i don't know basically just wrapping it with hardware cloth uh, the more i think about that that's it's gonna be difficult yeah because i won't be able to I, it, it, I won't be able to move it because as soon as i lift it up the hardware cloth is going to drag mm -hmm. and then if it's short enough to not drag when i lift it up then it's tall enough for them to get underneath so maybe this meat mobile is just the wrong choice <laughs> i don't know we're gonna now focus on building a uh, cattle panel chicken coop. Good thing I'm fluent in foul language. <laughs> Katie has taken the lawnmower uh, to the red barn and she's trying to get some T posts. And I'm gonna see if I can get these cattle panel out of the, uh, of the truck by myself. We'll see how it goes. We're in the part now of trying to figure out where we want these coops. So we're gonna have it where a coop and a coop and a coop are right next to each other using the same T-posts in the center. And so we just <clears throat> bent that T-post, <laughs> that cattle panel up. If we have the ends eight feet apart, that gives us six foot, four inch clearance at the peak, which is enough for me to walk under and Katie to walk under comfortably. Since I, since I slouch, I am no longer <laughs> as tall as I used to be. Um, so 24 feet wide. wide. And 15 foot long. Okay. Is what it will end up being. Okay. And so we're going to have, so this, this ground, you may not be able to see it, but where we're standing, it's it's flat and then it kind of slopes Ooh. downward that way. So we're going to have one section of it on this flat part and two sections down going uh, kind of down the slope. 
for two reasons. One, the flat part is under these trees and it gets good shade. So it'll keep cooler. And then the two sections down there will also have a lot of grass and things that they can dig through and pick and they can get some sunshine as well. Mm -hmm. So they can kind of control where they'd like to be. Yeah, and the water will run down, yep. down the slope away from them. And here it'll stay dry because it'll be under a tarp in these trees. Yep. Perfect. Got it. Look at us thinking something through. Our helpers. Meanwhile, we have an audience. Yeah, because the, if we're keeping them eight foot apart. So if I put this here. in place. It would just be... I want to I want to position this right where we want it to end mm -hmm. on the flat part. Yep. Good? Your side needs to come up. Okay. Uh, very close. Yeah, I think that looks good. Like that? Yep. Okay, so we can go off of this. This is our straight line. Uh huh. So we'll have a corner, we'll have a post here. Okay. And then we'll go eight feet mm -hmm. and have a post. Correct. is right on this. Okay. Right here. Here. I'll give you this one. And then we have to figure out which direction we're going. Uh, it's going to bend. So we want it to go this way. Okay. And then is and that's to account for the fact that it's going to have another one on the other side of it. Yep. One will go against these notches and one will go against the flat. Okay. And then same positioning for the end, or no? Because this is the end. Yeah, same positioning. Okay. So we'll just do this? Yeah, turn it around, those so you have the notches. I think that makes sense to have notches. I think. Okay. All right. Get my uh, little pounder. Uh, one thing I want to note before I start pounding down these T-posts, our neighbors, Howie and Rita, gave us a T-post driver. I can't find it, so I'm back to using my mini uh, sledgehammer. It's somewhere. We'll <laughs> find it. <laughs> I guess it doesn't have to be perfectly level. You want to tell me if it looks level? All right, well, it not as tall as as uh, we had hoped it to be. <laughs> I have to duck a little bit. A um, couple things we are thinking through now <laughs> is with these T-posts sitting up like this, sticking out, we can't easily put a tarp just over the panel, the cattle panel. So the tarp is going to have to go over the T-post, so we'll put some sort of cap on these or maybe some wood blocks on the top and the, and the back of it so the wood block keeps it from tearing in these sharp edges here or something. Uh, and then we decided to go with uh, zip ties to keep the panel on, but it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's a strong pull. So we may, I may want to go back and get the metal cl uh, clips that um, you can clip onto T-posts to keep items secured on T-posts. So a couple modifications we may want to make here. I'm also kind of just thinking through to see if this is how I really want to do it, or if I want to scrap this idea and just go with using wood as the base and the frame as opposed to just T-posts. So taking a pause for now, taking a little snack break and water break and kind of thinking through this. 
I have been working on ways to preserve food and to use the eggs that we're currently getting and also find some creative ways of storing them. I recently got a food dehydrator and I tested it out with some apples and some bananas and today I'm going to walk you through what I'm planning to do to preserve and um, basically dehydrate some of the eggs for future use and so that they don't take up quite so much counter space. And this is after giving approximately eight dozen away to our neighbors, feeding them to our animals on a regular basis. I just haven't had a lot of time to cook with work and with chores and all the projects we're working on. So since I have a few hours, Nate's actually away at the store, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't take care of and start preserving these. I'm also going to scramble some up and prepare them for the freezer as well. So I'll have some really easy ready-made. I'm gonna actually put some bowls together where it's gonna be bacon and eggs and potatoes and some onions and peppers and have it all ready for the freezer so that you can just throw it in the microwave or on the skillet and have it really easy meal. Okay, so I just did four trays. I put them on the fruit leather or the, I think that's what's called fruit leather um, trays. And each tray had approximately three eggs. Some of them had four eggs on them. So it was about a dozen or a baker's dozen, 12 to 13 eggs that I was able to get on four trays. So, so we got four trays of eggs going. I'm just gonna follow the instructions that were provided with the unit. We're gonna set it for 12 hours at a temperature of 140 degrees. fell out of love with this idea. There was just too many complicating factors doing it this way. And Katie's original idea was just to do a wood frame, wood base frame, do the arches, and then build a doorway using uh, some lumber. And I think we're gonna go back to that. So Katie is off on a business trip over the next couple of days, and I'm gonna focus on getting these chicken coops built and ready for the chickens, because we need to have some chicks that are fully feathered and ready to go into a coop that are currently inside brooders uh, inside the house and they just need more space and we want to get them out of there it stinks it's not ideal so they're ready to come outside um, so I think I'm going to take this thing apart really quick uh, I didn't get myself a t-post remover so I'm going to leave those in the ground for now and later uh, when I go back to the store, whenever that is, I'll get a T-post remover and remove those. I hope I can get the stuff built today with the lumber that I bought and maybe repositioned after I get those T-posts out because we want it to be uh, a portion of it up here on the flat and then it kind of goes downhill a little bit and we want to have the run kind of go downhill and their area where the uh, the perches are going to be, and the nesting boxes are going to be up on the flatland, covered in, covered with the tarp. So I'm going to get to building this. The challenge that I have with building, with the uh, with the lumber here, so I have uh, two by fours, and some are 12 feet long, and some are eight feet long, um, is getting them to be square. So I went when I was at the hardware store. I looked for a jig that would uh, be able to take two pieces of wood and um, butt them together in a 90 degree and so I could uh, uh, staple or staple just I could nail or screw them together I couldn't find anything for two by fours which was really surprising for me so I'll look for that online but for now I think what I'm going to use is a speed square clamp the two pieces together um, onto the speed square making a a 90 degree angle, screw them in with construction screws and see how far that gets me. 
So I'll be doing um, one, two, three, four 12 foot long runs of the two by four. That's the, the long portion of the, uh, of the chicken coop. And then uh, eight foot board between the two 12 foot boards. And that'll be the width of the chicken coop. And then I'll arch. And we're gonna put three of the coops together in, in a row so we can share some of the same walls. So I may end up just doing everything with uh, the 12 foot boards right now. Cause if I do three 12 foot boards, that's 36. If I do two 12 foot boards together, that's 24 feet. And that gives me three eight foot sections to work with. So I'm gonna get to building and uh, see how well this goes. And I got myself a timer, two o'clock. I'm gonna take a lunch break. So I'm really bad at, about taking lunch breaks. And at five o'clock, I'm gonna quit because I need to edit and post for you guys and get some other stuff done like taxes. So anyway, let's get to work. Lots to do. Stop yapping and start building. So the idea here is clamp one of those like that and then clamp the other one in place like that and screw it together. Here's where we are so far. I was able to get one of the eight foot by 12 foot sections done. I need to do two more of those. And so here is, let's see, can we see that? Um, from here to where that black line is. So from here to here, that is four feet. So I'm gonna build another one of these and bring it over here and join those two four pieces together by scabbing them together. <coughs> That's my plan at least. So then I'll have one, two, three, eight foot sections by 12 foot. And then what I'll do is I will take cattle panel like this, arch them. I'll be able to take three pieces of cattle panel um, per 12 foot run, so a total of nine cattle panels will be arched together. And then I need to build some sort of a door system and end cap so that way we can actually put chickens in them. Um, yes, we do plan on having something around the perimeter of them so animals can't dig underneath and get access to them. And we're gonna also wrap um, the bottom section of each of the cattle panels with hardware cloth so animals can't get in through the big holes of the cattle panel. So one step at a time, I might end up putting some blocking here in the corner, maybe cut some two by fours or maybe if I have some two by sixes or something um, and then put them here in the corner and screw them in just to tighten up these corners and so they can't go back and forth when I move it but I'm pretty happy with the way that my corners turned out using this system where I um, use some clamps and a speed square to keep everything in line. It's working out pretty well. All right, I'm gonna get the other ones set up and then see if I can move this stuff into place. Uh, maybe I'm gonna take a little break, have some water and a little snack and then get back to it. Katie made these uh, dried apple chips and dried strawberry chips. Put a little silica gel in there to keep the moisture content down after, I think she used her de food dehydrator. It's really good. This one, this batch, she didn't do uh, cinnamon and sugar. She just did cinnamon on them, which I prefer and the strawberries are just, just plain. They're just delicious. They're really good. So this is my snack for now. So I didn't realize that these uh, 12 foot two by fours were actually 12 
feet and three quarters of an inch. And I would have cut off the three quarter inch before I put those uh, pieces together that I just finished. So when I join two, 12, uh, 12, two of these 12 foot two by fours together, they're gonna be an inch and a half too long. So I'm gonna cut two of these an inch and a half shorter so that way when I join them, they are exactly 24 feet in length, giving me an even three bays where I can do arches that will be the same height all throughout the, uh, the coops. So I have the piece kind of in the general location that they are going to uh, reside at. Probably a little bit of adjustment here and there with them. But I do need to get these posts out of here and block these two ends together. Uh, so I think right now it's good time to stop for lunch. It's about 1.45 or so. Have some lunch, gather my thoughts, and come back and see if I can get this all joined together. And then these things stake down, and at the end there where they, where they raise up, put some uh, support on those, and then we'll have to uh, put chicken wire and stuff all the way down to the bottom. I'm happy with the way the frame is turning out. It's square-ish. Like it's pretty square, but it's not perfectly square, and that's okay. They're long 12-foot two by fours. There's a little bit of warp in them and a bend in them as to be expected. I try to choose the best uh, two by four by 12s that I could find in the, um, in the rack. So anyway, have some lunch, I'll be back. So now I have a relatively level platform. You can see how much the ground slopes. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so this back here is touching the ground and they're relatively level. So now what I can do is I can join up the two ends in the center here. I can join those two together and I can join these two together and it'll become one solid or one uh, unified platform. And Kinsley's having some fun out here. You having a good time, Kinsley? Huh? Are you having a good time? Hmm? You're the good girl. You're the good girl. Yes, you are. I'll do the same to those back there, and then I'm going to readjust the level just a little bit, just to tweak it. But I'm pretty happy with this. This is good. So I think I'm going to scoot the whole thing back this way. We're standing right now on the flat area, and this is where the the, um, the nesting boxes and the egg boxes are gonna go. So we can easily come over here and 
uh, grab the eggs and also the feed, do feed and water from back here. And if we need to get into the chicken coops, we're gonna be doing it from down here. And right now with it being so far forward and the slope being so much on this ground, um, I mean, I guess it's not horrible. The, the door, we'll have to build a frame right here and then block all of the slope with um, some more framing and some hardware cloth. But I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it back a little bit more and see if I like that positioning better than where we're currently at. I moved it into place and I've been trying, I've been kind of fiddling with it, going back and forth, trying to get it uh, level. I really don't need it to be level level. I do like the way that it sits better or that it's sitting now, it's not as high where the front doors are gonna be. I think I'm gonna keep it here for now. I also, my alarm clock went off, it's five o'clock, and I gave myself a deadline today to work until five. Cause I still need to uh, do chores and then edit and publish this video for you guys, which you're seeing on Wednesday. So I'm gonna call it quits here. I really hoped to get farther along on this. I wanted at least to get one of these uh, chicken coops, the panels, the three panels up on them, but it's okay. I'll, uh, I'll finish that up tomorrow. I might run into town early in the morning and get the T-post pullers just so I can get those out of the way. Anyway, uh, drywallers are back tomorrow to do some more drywall work and uh, yeah, so it'll be another busy day. So anyway, um, I hope you guys follow along on this chicken coop build. I hope to have it done this week. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Forgot to mention something. Uh, Katie and I started a new channel. It's called Keeping It Kramer, and it is a daily vlog where Katie and I talk about our day, uh, what we did yesterday, what we're what we did, or actually what we did today, what we plan on doing tomorrow. Uh, we talk about various random things. Uh, we go into more detail about the projects that we're working on that we can't quite get into the vlogs, our typical The Kramer Life vlogs. We get a lot of questions on things that we kind of skip over in those vlogs, and so we kind of try to recap on those. Um, we'll go through comments at times and answer some of the comments, uh, both from the Kramer Life vlog channel and from the Keeping It Kramer channel. We would love to have you guys join us. Um, I'll put a link to that channel down below and I would really love for you to head over there to subscribe. We're trying to get to that 1000 subscriber mark. We already have three videos up. Tomorrow will be video number four. So by the time you see this, there'll be four videos up. Episodes one, two, three, and four. If you'd like, to get a little bit more behind the scenes and in-depth with Katie and I, then come join us at Keeping It Kramer. Appreciate it. We'll see you there.